doubled now as a starter. On well, the left, he was one of the first players to sign under Coach Marvin Menzies. He's a slasher. He's the team's best on-ball defender, and he's really become a leader in his senior year. Starting five out there for both sides. Wyoming in gold wins the tip. You see A.J. Banks, a junior, back in his hometown in Las Vegas, running the point for the Cowboys. Wyoming used to be a team that wanted to run 70-plus possessions, and now they've really slowed it down in the 40s, really taking the air out of the basketball, looking for the best possible shot at the end of the shot clock. Hunter Thompson misses the jumper. Clyburn with the rebound, and here come the running Rebels. Euro step and an off-balance shot won't go, but on the second try, Robotham missed the three. Wyoming's going to walk the ball up the floor, take as much time off the clock as they can. These eight players with all the ups and downs with the roster file before Wyoming only played in three games together, this being the third. Eight players, but only seven scholarship guys <laughs> right. for Wyoming. Cowboys 4-10 and ten on the season. They do have a win over South Carolina on the ledger. Floater goes for Justin James to open the scoring. Well, UNLV has, has not been great at taking care of the basketball this season. That is one of their keys. They have to keep rebounding as they do. But take care of the basketball, especially against these changing defenses. You're seeing Wyoming in a 2-3 zone. They're going to mix it up throughout the course of the game. Tom Blay, open look from the free throw line, rattles out. Still 2-0 Wyoming, and the Cowboys will settle into their offense. James, good contest there by Joel Tomboy, the freshman from Congo. Now Clyburn, transition three. Seeing some changing defenses by UNLVT uh, as well, too. Zone press, man-to-man. -man. Look for them to run some zone as well. James into the lane, and he lays it off the window. Four points early for the all-conference preseason selection. And one of the areas of concern for Wyoming is they want to run a little bit more zone than usual, simply not to let their guys get in foul trouble. When you're in man-to-man, -man, you tend to be in more foul trouble, but playing against a great rebounding team like UNLV, that poses problems. It's more difficult to to rebound when you're in zone defense. Said Coach Allen Edwards, third season with Wyoming, a two-time NCAA champ as a player at Kentucky. One under Coach Patino, one under Tubby Smith. Back-to-back 20-win -back seasons for him in Wyoming and in a very competitive Mountain West Conference. That's the first time, I think, in school history that a brand new coach comes in and has back-to-back 21 -back seasons. You know, he had the privilege of being under the previous head coach, Larry Shiat, before he took over the reins. James misses the jumper, another rebound to Clyburn. 4-3 early in favor of 4-10 and 10 Wyoming. Great look underneath it and an opportunity. What a pass by Robotham to get just near the paint and see the streaking player of his, Tobway. Beautiful pass and a terrific finish in traffic. Foul on Jordan Naughton, his first. Tomboy, the freshman from Congo, has a rim out. So 5-4, UNLV leading and some full court pressure from the Rebels. Now UNLV is going to try to wear these guys out as much as they can. There's not much bench for Wyoming. Eight guys, only seven that have played in the game yet this season. They're going to try to get them in foul trouble and try to get as many possessions as they can as Wyoming is trying to go against the grain and slow it down. James trying to throw it down low to A.J. Banks out of bounds in the turnover. There's Marvin Menzies, head coach at UNLV, his third season. Spent the previous nine at New Mexico State, including taking them to the NCAA tournament for of those nine campaigns.
For those watching, New Mexico upset previously unbeaten Nevada. Welcome to Las Vegas, where UNLV holds a one-point lead over Wyoming. Sam Farmer, former NCAA head coach Richie Schuler, here with you in Vegas. And Richie, a, a big development. Nevada, a one seed in the latest edition of Joel and Argy's bracketology falls in conference play. And what a missed opportunity. Kansas went down as the number five team in the country. I believe that was to Iowa State. So it was an opportunity for Nevada to crack the top five. That won't happen after this big loss in New Mexico. Great job by Paul Weir and those in Loboland. Here in Las Vegas, we're seeing Justin James get off to a great start. The preseason all-conference selection for Wyoming has all six for the Cowboys. We have two teams here trying to control the tempo of the game. Wyoming really trying to slow it down. Seven or eight able bodies to play in this contest due to various reasons. UNLV with a deep bench and really wanting to push the tempo, get up and down, just like their name, the Running Rebels. Vegas native A.J. Banks handling the rock with four on the shot clock. Thompson pulls up for three. Yes! I'll tell you what, he has had a very strong freshman campaign. 12 points, four boards a game, and almost 50% from behind the arc. Hunter Thompson, all of six foot ten. Two-point lead for the Cowboys. Settling back into that 2-3 zone. See how the wings are getting up high in that 2-3 zone, trying to push the ball out. Joel Tomway now has six for UNLV. There's a lot of teams that when they run a 2-3 zone, their wings, the guy, the two, the three on the bottom, the two in the sides oftentimes are a little bit too low, and it gives teams an opportunity to get closer to the basket. Ball, so it'll be White. Play three or four positions. You see what he can do with the basketball in his hands. And he is a guy that tested the NBA waters a little bit last summer. Had some private workouts with numerous NBA teams. You can see it paying off. And you see that experience in those NBA workouts, how it's showing this season. They're leading on him heavily this year with all the injuries they have seen. Block out of bounds by Mbake Jong. Second in the conference in blocks. How oh, about this block shot? That's how you get the crowd on your feet. This guy is a shot blocker. Actually had five blocks for Loyola Marymount earlier in the season. Didn't play as much a year ago. It was really behind Brandon McCoy. And McCoy told me last year that going against Mbake in practice was something that really helped him develop as a player. I had to. I mean, a guy, Brandon McCoy, now in the G League, didn't get drafted. You expect him at some point to latch on to some NBA team. And you know it pre certainly prepared him for that NBA level. James fouled on the three. That's a James Harden style uh, pull up. <laughs> pull up the foul. I've seen a lot of that over the last few years. Goes on Chris Clyburn, his first. Clyburn hit the three earlier, which extends a streak that goes back to the beginnings of the three-point line in the college game. You know, he has hit a three in every single game since that rule was instituted. Isn't that amazing? Justin James, look at those statistics. One of four active players in the entire NCAA. 1,600 plus points, 500 plus boards, over 200 assists. Averaging 21 and almost 10 rebounds a game in this season to go along with about four and a half assists. He is Mr. Do Everything for Wyoming. Three for three at the line. He's got nine total and Wyoming leads at 12-9. Sam Farber, Richie Schuler here with you in Las Vegas. Night two of Mountain West action for both these sides. Both picked in the middle of the pack in the conference. UNLV hoping to rise above their ranking. Joel Tambe, nice start for him. He's got eight. UNLV just daring Wyoming to get up and down the floor. Wyoming wants to take 25 seconds off that shot clock before they get a field goal attempt. 
weave the clock down to six seconds. James, the floater, yes. Wow. Nobody in UNLV can guard him. He's getting in the paint at will. That's mistake number one. You're letting him get into the paint, and then there's no help side rotation to help cut him off from taking a jumper inside. Will Botham. Blanks the three and a rebound for Trace Young. This Wyoming team, they're very much shorthanded, but they're long. They're pretty yeah. athletic. They're a size advantage against a lot of Mountain West teams, probably UNLV too, although it's close. And they had four guys. It's going to be a kickball. Four guys are out due to medical injury reasons. One guy who's suspended indefinitely, and then they have a guy who left the team about a month ago. They're down to seven scholarship players. And, and they have one player in uniform that's a walk-on manager just in case. But you see these three guys right here. That's the bulk of their offense uh, for the guys that are injured at this point in time. It's a big blow to this Wyoming squad that won 20-plus games over the last two years. Yeah, Coach Edwards wasn't even using their names. He just said, you see a dunk attempt by Trace Young. He'll go to the line. But he said, that's my starting point guard. That's my number two scorer. <laughs> Looking at the role they were supposed to fill as we see Trace Young wow. try and fill up a Sports Center top 10 highlight. How about this young man? Look at that from just outside the restricted arc. Fouls called on Jong of UNLV. This kid shows absolutely no fear. This is his third collegiate basketball game. Trace Young was supposed to be a medal or for a red shirt this season, but with all the injuries and issues with the squad, he had to step in. And he's averaging 16 points a game, four and a half boards in his third college game. Coming off a career high last time out against Boise State. Goes 0 for 2 at the stripe, so still a three-point Wyoming lead on the road here at Thomas and Mack. Look at the intensity, the defense by Wyoming, confusing UNLV. Look at that. And stolen right back. Open three, Miss Padley by Hardy. You now AJ Banks, the Las Vegas native, will just walk it up. Said Richie, this is one of the keys for Wyoming. Slow it down. Well, they're also going to have to do a good rebounding job. They've done a really good job of that thus far. It appears in their zone. It's so much harder to rebound in a zone. UNLV, one of the best rebounding teams in the entire nation. Hardy challenging and a blocking foul will send him to the line. <laughs> That's impressive stuff right there. I'm, I'm gonna, Alabama has been like, Alabama football is like the UCLA basketball of the 60s. I mean, it's amazing. Since 2003, six national championships under Nick Saban's watch. I couldn't tell you how many national championships they have all together, but I know they've won that series with Clemson 14 to 4 over the course of the entire century plus between those two teams. Who are you going with? Just two and one, though, in the national championship. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like uh, in every other year kind of thing, maybe Clemson's turn. Could be. It really could be. Or will Nick Saban get number seven? We're, we are here in Las Vegas, so we check. The, uh, the wise guys seem to think that it's an Alabama <laughs> advantage. We see Strong. the block shot. Alabama advantage, but the lines come down a little bit in favor of Clemson the last couple of days. <laughs> Chong with the rejection. That's his second highlight block of the game. Clyburn hits the side of the backboard. And a loose ball to Justin James. You want to get a quiet crowd on their feet? Put Mbake Jong in the game. Block shot after block shot. And highlight ones at that. Nine minutes in, it's a four-point Wyoming lead. Cowboys four and ten overall in the year. UNLV seven and six. Baseline drive, Banks stepped out of bounds, so a turnover back to the running Rebels. Look at this block by Jong. Unbelievable. Justin James has had his way down inside there, but he said, uh-uh, Dikembe Mutombo style. Clyburn in the corner. Rims out, and a foul on the rebound. It's going to go against Wyoming, it looks like. 
The 2-3 zone by Wyoming has really disturbed UNLV. UNLV is not a great three-point shooting team. They're about 30% on the season, 29%. And you're tempted to shoot more threes against the zone. It's the easier shot to take. Woodbury subs in for UNLV. Freshman from right here in Las Vegas. Work it to him. He'll fire up from three. Bates hit in. Sam, you tell me what bank is open on a Saturday in Vegas? Anyone near a casino here? Now that's an excellent point. <laughs> Look at the shot here. Great pass across the court by Robotham. And there he is, the shooter, Trey Woodbury, knocking down the three-point shot. Averaging one point a game on the season, but against his own, hey, he's a zone buster. Stick him in there. Line change. I'm sorry, Wyoming just running everyone down for a quick huddle. They don't have enough players to make a line change. Only seven really in the rotation for the Cowboys. And the walk-on manager hasn't got any play yet. He's only been in uniform three games. See, now I think you're getting where you're Justin James here. You might be forcing a little bit. Got blocked by Jong a few possessions ago. Now he takes the three that wasn't necessary. Starting to press a little bit. You're a big-time scorer. It's only a small town in Wyoming. Hasn't seen the floor yet, but he is suited up just in case. Fort Laramie High School, about an hour away from Laramie, started dressing at UTEP. And here he is. If needed, due to fouls, he'll have to get in there and play. He's got to be prepared. I mean, it's one of the great things about college basketball when the walk-ons get in at the end of the game. Unfortunately for Coach Edwards, they potentially might need to go to him sooner, depending on how these games go. we got a tie-up and a jump ball. Well, let me ask you, if you were at Wyoming as a student right now, would you be chomping at the bit? I played horse with you. I know you can <laughs> shoot it. Would you try to walk on the team to be like Casey Henry right now? Look, I, I would not pass in intramurals anymore. I would just say, hey, Coach, by the way, I scored 35 for my intramural team. You took 78 shots. That's right. <laughs> One point lead for UNLV. Head coach Marvin Menzies trying to get this Ryan Rebels program back to the prominence they once were. Fifth winning is NCAA program all time. Behind the four Blue Bloods, huh? Here's coach. Really amazing what he did at New Mexico State before he came here. Nine seasons there, seven WAC titles. I believe that six of the last seven seasons he was there, they made a postseason appearance. Thompson banks it in. Five points for the redshirt freshman. Fans wanted to travel. Wyoming back up by one. Baseline jumper goes for Travell Beck. Seesaw is back to the Rebels' favor. UNLV running this different type presses. This is a 1 2 1 1 diamond press. And see, offense not quite set. They took about 10 seconds off the shot clock. When you run a diamond press like that, a lot of times people will trap out of it. But in any case, it really disturbed and distracted Wyoming into a turnover. Three goes off the heel and the rebound to Wyoming. Rebounding a big key for this team. The Cowboys are amongst the 25 worst in all of NCAA in rebound margin. UNLV, meanwhile, one of the best rebounding teams overall, including very elite when it comes to the offensive glass. Second in the nation. 16 offensive boards a game. That'll get you some second chances. And a travel before the foul. That's going to be a foul on Hunter Thompson. Seven rebounds, four assists. Cam Reddish, Trey Jones. He's the leader, the general, the coach on the floor. We talk about North Carolina, Nasir Little, Luke May. North Carolina State, they're making things happen. The ACC, that whole area, unbelievable. Tobacco Road is not going to be a fun one to travel if you're an opposing team in 2019. Here in Las Vegas, UNLV, a one-point lead against the shorthanded Wyoming Cowboys.
and make it a three-point advantage as Tom Way reaches double figures. I like what Marvin Menzies drew up in that huddle. That's the way to attack his own. Get that ball in the short corner and then hit somebody in the paint diving to the basket. Corner three from Thompson. Missed the mark. And the rebound fought for and eventually controlled by UNLV. Extra pass to Beck. And keep walking it up the floor. AJ Banks, the Las Vegas native, works his way to the 10 and lays it in. His first time back here in Las Vegas as a player, went to junior college and didn't play really in this area. Banks took his JUCO time at Pratt Community College in Kansas. So finally a homecoming for him. Into the lane again, lost the handle, got it back. They're waving it off saying the foul was on the floor. That would have been a highlight for sure. Joel Tomway, you see, look at that diving to the basket and the good turnaround jumper by him about 12 feet out. And on the other side, A.J. Banks, the local product, playing his first game against UNLV for Wyoming to the basket. Tomway, who had the first in that series, now in his seventh straight game in double figures, he's really had his scoring average shoot up, was below 10. First eight or nine games of the year. Now he's averaging almost 20 per game as we see a three go through for Hunter Thompson. To give Wyoming a lot of credit. This is the second best offensive rebounding team in the country in UNLV. They have held them to two offensive rebounds while playing a 2-3 zone. Again, it's difficult to rebound defensively when you're in a zone. You're not guarding a man where you have somebody automatically to go and block out. You're guarding an area, and if somebody's not in your area, you tend not to block out, and somebody can find a crevice or some sort of gap to get in and get a rebound. This is an excellent rebounding job here in the first half by Wyoming on the defensive end. Zone in general, too, also not a bad idea against the UNLV team that doesn't shoot well from beyond the arc. They're dead last in the conference at 28% on the season, and they've started tonight 2 for 11 beyond the arc. Hardy slashes his way to the 10, missed at the rim. And the rebound to Justin James. See this score? This is how Wyoming wants to play now. And it used to be 70, 80 possessions of what they wanted. Now they're talking 40, 48 possessions. That's how they want to do it. Penetrating kick from James. Another look at three, and another one goes down for Hunter Thompson. Timeout, UNLV. And uh, that was in the season opener, so he has played five less games than his counterpart. Five-point lead for Wyoming as they've got this run against the running Rebels, and they'll stick to the zone, which has befuddled, for the most part, UNLV. Look at that. Great hands by the defender. T.J. Taylor, number 13, reached his hand there and didn't allow the ball to go inside the paint. If you're Wyoming, you want to keep the ball outside the three-pointer. If you're UNLV, you want to get inside the paint. Offensive rebound to UNLV, and a foul is going to send Joel Tombwe to the line. Tomboy, an 83% free throw shooter. That's top five in the conference. It's from Kinshasa, Congo. Six foot nine, 210 pounds. And as I mentioned, he's really shot up and is scoring double figures now in seven in a row. He's got a dozen tonight. And it makes it a one possession game. Less than five minutes left in the first half. A really good one for Wyoming. Shooting the three well, especially Hunter Thompson. And Justin James with the ball right now is in double figures. Throws it down low. Great look. And the lane is there for 
Hunter Thompson. That's beautiful. James looked like he was going to shoot it. And a very tall Hunter Thompson waiting for the lob pass. It's a double dribble. Again, that zone. When you're playing against the zone, you're not just playing against one-on-one. -on -one. There's two, three other players waiting for you. Look at this pass by James, though. Looks like he's going to go up. It's going to be contested. And Hunter Thompson with a terrific shot fake to get his defender in the air, fake one, and then go right back up. That's beautiful basketball. 28-23 Wyoming. The Cowboys have not fared well here in Las Vegas historically. They have lost 17 in a row here in Nevada. I think they're going to wave, oh, wave that count, bucket off. He's counting it. They counted it. I'm not so sure. Uh, the official put his hand down, too. And now they're pointing uh, at the floor. The official fooled me. <laughs> well, the one official on the baseline said no good. The other one gave it two. And here we go. We're taking underneath. Foul is on Hardy, his first. Four minutes left here in the first half. As I was saying, Wyoming, 17 straight losses here at Thomas and Mack. The last time they won, 2003. That's a long time ago. You're certainly bright for Wyoming. And, of course, Justin James, the leader of this Wyoming team, actually getting a breather, which is a rarity for the Cowboys. He is fourth in the nation in minutes per game at 38 a contest. But they'll get him a breather here. Well, let's see if UNLV in these last, you know, four minutes tries to get some more stuff inside. They're 2 of 12 from the 3. You want to beat a zone by hitting the elbows, hitting the short corners, driving into the gaps. And, and I think they have the, the ability to do that. But I think right now they've got to have somebody at that elbow. Three on the way from Hamilton. Missed it. And on the offensive rebound, no, it's a foul against UNLV. So we're going the other way. Wyoming trying to steal a couple minutes with Justin James on the bench and talking to head coach Edwards during shoot around. He said, you know, part of it's him is is redu reduction in scoring the last handful of games has been him trying to do too much. The other part is on the coaching staff. They just haven't found ways to get him off the floor, get him some rest. Now they lost Austin Mueller to a torn ACL. They lost Hunter Maldonado, who's out four to six weeks with a sciatic nerve issue and some back spasms he had earlier in the year. Nye Redding, backup point guard, another player that they lost. The list goes on and on for Wyoming. And, you know, when that tends to happen, you start to put a little more pressure on yourself as the star player in Justin James. I think he feels a lot of pressure on his shoulders to perform and carry his team to victory night in and night out. And Coach Allen Edwards said, hey, I don't want to see you one for, four and four, one for 14. You know, I'd rather see you taking more efficient shots and, and let the other players involve themselves and over time they will become better. T.J. Taylor goes two for two. At the line, freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia, makes it a seven-point spread on this wild-card weekend. Wyoming's up a touchdown. Clyburn blocks the Vegas native, A.J. Banks, pinning it on the backboard. Uh, that was just a great defensive effort, but UNLV, that's a good play. A little backdoor action. Just got to finish those shots inside. Go down low, Thompson. Nice pass, unable to finish Trace Young. Corner three in transition. And a rebound to Young. And now a turnover, Trace. Very concerned all the way up with the running Rebels defenders. Well, look at this backdoor play, this is beautiful. Clyburn, but then look who's there, A.J. Banks to take the block, pinned it on the backboard. That's just a great defensive effort. UNLV trailing by seven, trying to get off to a 2-0 start in conference play, something they haven't done since the 2005-2006 season. Find a little closer on the jumper by Trevell Beck, but heard them talking on local sports radio the other day. Saying, you know, they couldn't almost believe that it had been 13 years since there had been a 2-0 start for the mighty running Rebels. James. Couldn't 
quite get it over the lid. Under two minutes to play in the half. UNLV trailing by five. Keep an eye on number 24 for Tomboy. He's on the elbow right now. He's been begging for the basketball the last few possessions in that position. I really think if they get the ball to him, it can really break down this zone defense. After the stop, James will slowly walk it up. See that Las Vegas strip skyline. For Thomas and Matt. Got a foul on the entry pass. That's going to send James to the line. Should still be one and one. I feel like UNLV's had some missed opportunities on the offensive end, and I guarantee you going into the locker room, Marvin Menzies is going to talk to his players about is executing against the 2-3, hitting that high post. Tomboy is open there more often than not. If you can get that ball to the elbow, you can make plays happen. It might be a high-low. He might be able to reverse it for an outside shot in the opposite corner. Tomboy has the ability, though, to face up and take it strong to the basket. James now 4 for 4 from the free throw line. He's number one in all the NCAA in attempts and number two behind only Mike Dom of South Dakota State in terms of makes this year. No broadcaster's jinx either, five for five. <laughs> Seven point lead once again for Wyoming. Double ball screen action. Good, get in the paint. Well done. Good contest by Hunter Thompson. Another stop for the Cowboys. Coming up on one minute left here in the first half. As good as it can be for Wyoming with a seven point lead. Thompson, charge. It's a great defensive play by Turvell Beck to take the hit and fall down. And you want to get Hunter Thompson in foul trouble. He's been the top scorer thus far for Wyoming with 13 points. Yes. The freshman's got 15. That's his first three of the night. 6-9-4 from the Congo. About a 40% three-point shooter. Roughly a five-second game clock, shot clock differential as the first half winds down. James, pull up. Rattles out, and the rebound, we're going to have a foul on it, and free throws coming for UNLV, who's in the bonus. Monday on ESPN, we'll have the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. It's the Tide and the Tigers, round four. It's number one, Alabama takes on number two, Clemson. All starts at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific, and also streaming live on the ESPN app so you can watch anywhere. Initially, the wise guys here in Las Vegas said it was Bama by seven. That line's down to about five or four. What are you thinking, Richie? You know, I got to give it to Alabama. I think they're going to take it. I think they're going to take it. When you look at you being a wise guy, calling these guys wise guys. <laughs> Tom has got 17 here tonight. Now a stop for UNLV. They'll have to fire it up. Tom Way running out of time, and he didn't get it off. 17 points for Joel Tom Way. You say coming back from their respective injuries. They are that much deeper and that much stronger. Back to action here in Las Vegas. Wyoming with the two-point lead entering the second half. And under head coach Allen Edwards, they are 35-2 and two when leading at the break. Out of halftime, Hunter Thompson unable to hit the three, but an offensive board for Wyoming. Only three players for this Wyoming team has taken a field goal attempt. And right there, you see 
The main man, Justin James, has now taken 13 of, of their total 23. Only three guys have taken a shot. Will more guys get involved, or is this just how Coach Allen Edwards wants it? Kick to the corner, Clyburn for three. And the rebound goes to Wyoming. UNLV continues to hoist from deep. That's their 16th attempt. They are the worst three-point shooting team in the Mountain West. If you're Marvin Menzies, do you go to something else, even against the zone? Oh, I guarantee you that Coach Menzies has talked to them about the different ways to attack the zone. There's Hunter Thompson again. Inside, outside, mid-range. The freshman can do it all. 17 points now. Tomway with the three. He's got 20. We are seeing the battle of big men freshmen. Thompson versus Tomway. One possession game right now in favor of Wyoming. Team came into Las Vegas 4-10. and 10. Did have a win over South Carolina. They haven't won here in 17 tries. If I'm UNLV, I am trying to push the ball up the floor before Wyoming gets set in their 2-3 zone. That zone has given them fits for 22 minutes now. Oh, he's so good. He is so good. Tomboy, the freshman from Congo via the Aspire Academy in Kentucky. Mid-range, three-pointers, down inside the paint. He is single-handedly carried this running rebel squad. Get the shot down inside. They're finally getting down inside to him, and that's the second time we've seen him with a turnaround jumper. He was the Mountain West Player of the Week just a couple weeks ago when he was 6 of 8 from the field in an OT win over BYU. He has really taken off in the last month or so was a single digit per game kind of guy. Now he's closer to 20 per game. James might have gotten away with a bit of a long dribble. Turns it over out of bounds anyways. Attack the gaps. Penetrate inside. Hit the elbows. You got to get the ball inside. That's better. Tom Boy. Yes! That's a career high. 24 for the freshman. board and the putback rims out on Naughton. UNLV hustling up the floor. Hardy. They're waving it off. In the NBA, that's definitely an end one. A continuation, right? I love how the crowd is getting into it. There's one thing I know that Vegas loves, and that's winners. And Marvin Menzies, the way he's Done it here, 20 plus wins, two seasons in a row. And they've continued to get better. Next year's squad's gonna have one, two seniors. And after that, the next two years after next season, they're expecting veteran groups of five seniors on both squads. He is building this program the right way. The last foul on Hunter Thompson, his third. A couple of Cowboys have three fouls right now. An offensive putback for UNLV. for the Rebels. And a jump ball. Roll Botham with the bucket and then the tie-up on the other end. So he and LV. Career high for him so far tonight. He's got this crowd into it here at Thomas and Mack. Coach Marvin Menzies was talking to us during shoot-around about 
how much Las Vegas loves a winner. And he said he's not a hockey guy, but he saw what the Golden Knights did on the ice during the last Stanley Cup run or Stanley Cup Finals run and said, you know, that's kind of what he remembers UNLV feeling like when they were competing for national championships and what he thinks they can be again. This UNLV squad is seven and six. As this program continues to grow, and trust me, it will under Coach Menzies leadership, you're going to see this arena loud, proud, and packed. No question. The job he'd done in New Mexico State over nine years, we talked about it earlier, the seven WAC titles. He had a couple All-Americans there before he took over here. And he's learned under some great coaches, Rick Pitino, Lon Kruger, Henry Bibby. The list goes on and on. And the career that he has, had. He said this was his dream job. It wasn't to go back to his alma mater, UCLA. His dream job was UNLV. And we actually talked about UCLA with him as well. That's kind of the big question out there. Who will get that job eventually? And a guy like Marvin Menzies seems to have the pedigree to be up for it, having had some NCAA success at New Mexico State and building this UNLV program. He's an alum, but he said, no, he's not thinking about it. This is, as you said, Richie, his dream job. But let's think about it. And this is going to make some people angry. How great a job really is UCLA? The pressure is enormous. You don't have it as good there as you do in some other Pac-12 schools. I mean, there's been one coach at UCLA that's lasted 10 years, and that's been Hallen since John Wooden. And they kind of ran him out of town after some they did. Final Four runs. Steve Lavin, a bunch of Sweet 16s. Steve Alford. Jim Herrick, well, he won a national title. Got in the last 10 years. Got a delay here as they tend to Hunter Thompson, get some blood off him. Wyoming really can't afford to sub him out because they don't have the bodies to replace him. They're running with seven tonight. Eight if you count the walk-on student manager who's suited up midway through the season. But Wyoming is doing a good job of limiting their personal fouls by playing zone. You're, you're likely less to foul in a zone. Thompson missed the baseline jumper. Had his hands on the offensive board, but yanked away by Hardy for UNLV. Now Clyburn, and he's fouled. Tell you, this UNLV squad has come out with a lot of passion and energy in the second half. Look at the way they're attacking now, not allowing Wyoming to set up in their 2 3 zone. They're going right at it, and now it's going to give Clyburn two free throws. Chris Clyburn, senior from Detroit, Michigan, the first player to sign with Coach Marvin Menzies. He was coached by former Kentucky head coach Billy Gillespie in junior college, Ranger College. Texas they lost in the junior college national championship semifinals the record was 35 and 3 coach Gillespie can coach now three-point ball game here at Thomas and Mack Wyoming has not won here since 2003 but they're keeping it close Banks surrounded now six on the shot clock Thompson fading away and did not draw iron. Justin James a bit hobbled at center court. See him hunched over. The referees want to ask him how he's doing. He could barely walk. I think he might have rolled his ankle. See it right here. Look at number one with the basketball. Yeah, there it is right there. The left ankle. Uh, he has been the focal point of their offense, taking about half their shots. Can't afford to lose him. Small margin for error. Hardy hits the three. UNLV smells blood in the water with James Hurt. They turn on the pressure, and now James calls for a timeout. Taking the vast majority of the shots, have the vast majority of the points. We'll see. What they can do is James remains on the floor, but he'll play off the ball. Banks, the Las Vegas native with five on the shot clock, is fouled. Wyoming is 
50% from the field in the first half. They are now two of eight, 25% here in the second half. Haven't had the offensive magic touch that they did early on. UNLV has come out, made adjustments, and pushed the tempo of the game here in the second half. That was on Marvin Coleman. His first six-point lead for UNLV. And way short on the pull-up for James. Uh, he's got not done that very good leg lift with that bum ankle. I also think he was worried about coming down on that ankle because there were his feet underneath him. Five on the shot clock. Hardy's going to have to hurry. They get it off just in time, but not the shot you're looking for if you're UNLV. It's a terrific defensive possession by Wyoming. Not allowing the ball to go inside the arc. Taylor for three. Too strong. Just the sixth shot attempt from the Cowboys from someone not named James or Thompson. The tomboy right there at the elbow. Hit him right there at the free throw line. There you go. Asking you shall receive, Richie. 16-2 run for UNLV. Test there on the drive by Banks, and here come the running Rebels again. Tomway to Clyburn. Oh. Almost got the acrobatic lay, and he'll head to the line. See how they're pushing the tempo? Wyoming. They've gone an upgrade to flagrant foul for the grab of Clyburn as he was in midair. Flagrant one will give you two free throws, and they're going to get the ball back out of bounds on the baseline. So this is terrific if you're a UNLV fan. Clyburn better than an 80% free throw shooter. Here's what they're trying to get out of the game. Uh, yes, right there on Justin James. The excessive grab could be dangerous. That's one of those plays where I don't think he's trying to hurt anybody, but had Clyburn not had his balance, he might have fell and hurt himself pretty seriously. Oh, with the athleticism in the modern day game, yep. that's a dangerous play, getting off balance in midair. You wouldn't know anything about that, Sam. Uh, I don't quite have the hops, no. The run for UNLV now, 18 to 2. John, gotta have your hands. best was 22 against BYU. He has been on fire his last now seven games. This is starting to get away from Wyoming. Already has a hobble Justin James. That prayer goes unanswered. It's a four shot. Trace Young hasn't had a field goal attempt all game. He took that long three and Coach Allen Edwards is asking, what are you doing? That's not a good shot. Find a shot in the offense. It's going to be more efficient. Trying to get it to Thompson. The post. It's deflected and stolen by John. Wyoming is steal. And this is going to end an 0 for the last nine run as AJ Banks gets some cheers here at home in Las Vegas. For a couple. Hometown. Junior college transfer from Pratt Community College getting a chance to play in his hometown, but on the road. We've got a foul of luck on Hunter Thompson. That's his fourth. Him and James have carried this team from an offensive standpoint. Don't need him in foul trouble. A.J. Banks, though, look at the steal. And that's when you have a glove like that, you can just get in the passing lane. It's one on zero on the other end. Clyburn misses the first. 
Yeah, one more senior from Detroit really upgrading his role last season. He was a sixth man of sorts. Did start some, but wasn't a primary guy. Now he is. And he's had a solid performance. Seven points tonight. And UNLV is going to continue pressuring. Full court. Trying to make it difficult on James with the bum ankle. Taylor couldn't quite finish. Really good job by Wyoming. It's very hard in transition to go back into a 2 3. Usually, on a missed shot like that, you got to go into man. They set right up into it. Solid half court defense in this possession. Out of bounds, last touch by John. 6 11 sophomore from Senegal. Margin for error for Wyoming, so small with just such a limited bench. There's a lot of their big time scores injured or out for the season. And this run by UNLV has been predicated on pushing the tempo and getting more shots than Wyoming for various reasons. For reasons like that, turnovers. Hardy missed the lay in. Rebound to John. He misses in traffic, and it'll stay with UNLV. Substitution, Jordan Naughton heading in for Wyoming. He's having a trouble just completing passes. Well, I think that was more Hunter Thompson's inability to catch the pass, not being ready for it. And Jong, you want to see Jong with that big, strong frame. Take that, maybe pump fake, not fade away on the hook shot, but go up strong. Take the hit or slam it home. Oh, my. Hamilton for three. Yes. It too, huh? Gets him to the paint, kicks it out for an open teammate. Nice feed from Banks. Better block down low. Chachua with the denial. from Cameroon, Jonathan Chamwai Chachua. Well, look how good UNLV is, is making their defense become their offense. Terrific block by the big man. Then go down the other end. He is rewarded. Block on one end and Chamwa Chachua with the two on the offensive end. Thanks to shoot two at the other end. This game well, looking quite a bit like the one that preceded us here on ESPNU with New Mexico really turning it on against Nevada. They led at halftime by a pretty sizable margin, too, and just furthered things from there for an 85-58 to 58 win. But you see this UNLV team that did beat Nevada last year in Reno. What do you think the chances are for state dominance? Well, I, well UNLV, well, they, they did it last year, right? They went up to Reno and got it done. Now, that was without Caleb Martin of Nevada, but that's a rivalry game. When Vegas and Reno are playing head-to-head -head in the state of Nevada, you're going to expect a very packed arena and a lot of emotion and passion. Anything can happen in those games. 7.43 left to go. This should be in conference statistics. I tell you, UNLV was 20% from three, 33% overall in the first half. Now they're four of six from behind the arc and 53% from the field here in the second. They've really changed the complexion of the game. Wyoming has seen this one get away from them. They led at halftime, really dominated the first half of play with their 2-3 zone, but here in the second half, they've just been pretty much run off the floor. Air ball from Banks and another run out for the Rebels. Legs, I tell you, it's legs. There's three air balls here in the second half by Wyoming. In that manner, you're going to be tired at some point. I think it takes an effect here in the second half. 
Wyburn pull up is deflected. Falls to Wyoming. If you're the Cowboys, you've got a game in a couple of days at San Diego State. You know you're short on numbers, and Justin James looked like he rolled his ankle earlier already. There's not a whole lot of guys to put in there to give rest, but do you try and rest some people? Trace Young hitting the three. Well, you, you can't let guys get out of shape either. So there, it's a fine line. It's very difficult. If I'm coaching, yeah, you want to give them a rest day, but you still have to keep them moving. You got to get them on the court. You got to keep their lungs strong and big. You can't just sit around and expect to perform well in their next game. Strong lungs, generally speaking, have not been an issue for Wyoming playing at the highest elevation of any school in D1. They play at 7,200 feet. <laughs> I mean, usually they're the team that goes up and down, and because you've got that high eleva elevation, it's very difficult to breathe, and they try to make it difficult on the opponents that go there. The record under Allen Edwards in that arena is, is terrific. It's, it, it's a crazy number. During shoot-around for Wyoming, we heard a couple of the players saying, it feels good here. <laughs> <laughs> it's Coach Allen Edwards. And, and I feel bad for him, and I feel bad for the players because... It, a lot, of the, a lot of the strongest players on that roster are unable to play due to the injuries and one kid suspended indefinitely. We'll see how that turns out, but this team has talent and ability and even the seven they have, they're talented, they're good. Blocking foul here against Justin James, that's his second. UNLV's had some injury issues as well. Shakur Houston senior for the run and rebels he's out for the year with a knee injury and coach Menzies trying to put a positive spin on it said you know he was supposed to be one of our key players this year but we look at it like we recruited a really good kind of fifth year senior for next year as we take a look at mr. Houston that's one less player you have to sign because you got a ready-made player ready to come in it's not like it was a catastrophic injury Shakur Houston well, you can't overcome it. He's going to be fine in a matter of months, and he'll be fine just ready and back in shape come next preseason. Average a double-double last year. And could have been a catastrophic loss for UNLV. They lost him. Brandon McCoy left for the G League. That's two guys who averaged double-doubles a year ago who are not back, but UNLV, they've got some good pieces and some big plans here in the Mountain West Conference. Ball is tipped, and it'll stay with Wyoming with nine on the shot clock. Got some trivia for you. Give it to me. Well, UNLV's won a national championship, right? They have. Did you know Wyoming did? In what year? Ooh. Let's see here. As we see the three, gives me some time. Banks misses. Let me say 1938. 1943. 43. All right. And a man on that team named Kenny Sailor. Sailors, the inventor of the basketball jump shot. The only player... At Wyoming, who has his jersey retired, member of that national championship team. Just died a couple of years ago. Time. There's only four teams that have more wins all time than UNLV. Can you name them, though? I can. Can you? I can. Go for it. Duke. Yep. North Carolina. Got it. Kansas. Yes, sir. Kentucky. Four for four. And I didn't cheat. <laughs> Second try won't go for Robotham. Four and a half left to play. UNLV with the 12 point lead. The Run Rebels. Trying to go to 2 0 in conference play. We've seen and one here for Jordan Naughton. Good to see Naughton some action down inside the big man the senior 610 235 at a rancho cucamonga california stretching his back during an exhibition game earlier in this season he hurt his knee partially tore his lateral collateral ligament missed 10 games while well, we're in game 15 right now so he's still in that non-conference shape trying to get right back into mountain west play and one goes down for naughton Wyoming now in a 6-0 run. You know, V under Coach Menzies, well, last year was a solid 20-win season, but he knows he's got to turn up. Expectations get higher. When you're one of the top five win percentage teams in the history of college basketball, they don't let you have too many off years. 
I like the way Coach Menzies has built this program, though. Like I said, two years from now, they have five seniors. Three years from now, they have five seniors. The last three semesters, they've had a 3.0 or better. In the summer sessions, a 3.0 GPA or better. That's the first time in the history of one of the more competitive conferences, particularly on the West Coast, as far as non-Power 5 leagues. New Mexico now 2-0. Fresno State winning. They're going to go to 2-0 if they hang on. And UNLV with the lead. They'll go to 2-0 in conference play if this one holds out. Just look at the top 10. Gonzaga and Nevada, the only top 10 teams on the West Coast, and they're both from non-Power 5 schools. Said something. Well, Joe Lenardi's bracketology, the most recent edition, had Nevada as a one seed. I'd imagine that will change next time around based off the loss. But I think if there's one request I could have as a fan, don't put Nevada and Gonzaga in the same bracket. Right. It, it, <laughs> no matter how far one of them falls, let them have some shots against some of the big boys because in all honesty, sometimes a school like Nevada has trouble getting those schools to play them. And Loyola Chicago, they had to win their conference tournament to get in last year, and then they make the Final Four. Including going through Nevada. Running Rebels with the lob and the bank finish for Tomway. 31 for the freshman. Running Rebels have forced the Cowboys into 16 turnovers. Only four assists. Wyoming. Deep three goes. Wyoming makes it a 10-point game once again. Trace Young, his second triple of the second half. Well, you saw he forced one early. Coach got on him. And now, when shots come to him, they're not forced shots. He can knock those down. Well, Botham answers. Justin James only two points in the second half. Miss underneath. More run out for UNLV. James is steal, two on one. And he'll do it himself. No, he missed it, but the foul is there for Young. Now a timeout taken by Wyoming. Well, the Cowboys showing a good point, yeah. So here's that full court pressure. Wyoming still with one timeout remaining. Look at, they're going to look to trap here, potentially foul. Okay, now they're going to play straight up and continue trying to trap, get deflection on that ball and see if they can go the other way with it. Foul up near center court. Goes on A.J. Banks. His first. It's the sixth team foul, so no free throws yet, but I imagine if you're Wyoming and you want any shot at this, you got to put UNLV at the line. <laughs> trap, trap. They're going to foul immediately. One and one now. Robotham. Senior from Las Vegas is a 66% free throw shooter. Point guard for Coach Menzies, transferred here from Akron. So if you're Wyoming right now, you don't necessarily have to take all three-point shots, but you have to attack the basket and see if you can get fouled going to the rim, maybe get an and one. If the defense collapses on you, then you can kick out for threes. But Coach Allen Edwards right there, his squad can't just come down the floor and jack up a three that might be contested. Draw in the defense, see if you can get a layup, but if not, kick out for a three, and then immediately you have to get into your full court man-to-man -man press. Good attack. Young rejected by Chachua. Well, Coach Edwards, he wants a goaltending call. He's asking the official, wasn't that a goaltend? Wasn't the ball on the way down? Let's take a look. Yeah, the ball's on the way down. That should have been two points. Steal for Chachua. The only thing is, if the official said that wasn't a field goal attempt, that maybe he lost control and it was just batted out, that's not a block either.
Hardy in the lane. Missed the bank shot. Wyoming the rebound, but we're now under one minute to play, and this looks like a UNLV victory. They'll make it 18 straight home wins over Wyoming, although A.J. Banks got a foul out. Look to trap first, okay? You can't get the trap, then you foul. And Wyoming still has one timeout left. It's not out of the realm of possibility. Talked about Nevada, New Mexico. New Mexico beat them for the first time in that pit in two years. We were there two years ago when they were down 11 with a minute to go. And Nevada came back to win that game in overtime. Stranger things, Richie. Stranger things. Are we going to see the three-point shots that we saw in that game, though? I'm sure SVP and Bad Beats are keeping an eye on it. <laughs> <laughs> One more here for Robotham. Makes it a 12-point game with under a minute to play. you got to get some threes to drop for you at this point if you're a Cowboy. Marvin Coleman checks back in. Freshman from right here in Las Vegas for UNLV. Young. Nice contested lay-in. Freshman from Owensboro, Kentucky now in double figures with 10. There's three players to trap. All you have to do if you're a UNLV at this point is if they score, get the ball in bounds or rebound and just take care of the basketball. They've done a good job of that tonight. Almost two to one, the assist to turnover. Let Wyoming foul you and win the game at the free throw line. Third foul on Justin James. Chris Clyburn back to the line. All his points in the second half have come from the free throw line. And that's a weapon. If you can knock down free throws, if you're a player that can get to the free throw line by attacking the basket and getting fouled, you can get a lot of points at the charity strike. Round of applause for Joel Tomboy, a career-high 31 as he'll sit out the final 30-plus seconds. And I love the way Coach Marvin Menzies, after a terrific basketball game, is still instructing him, still coaching him. The young fellow still has a lot to learn, but he has a super bright future. And Coach Marvin Menzies is going to continue developing him no matter the success he has in a game or not. UNLV will go to New Mexico next. Game that's going to be on ESPN2, a matchup of a pair of 2-0 conference opponents. It's going to be a great matchup. And this UNLV team, 2-0 in Mountain West play. The running Rebels, they might be back. People in Vegas are excited. First time since 2006, UNLV is...